I hope that catches on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how are you doing? Good. Good. All right. So I had this whole Summer. planned out. I was going to do a comedy skit, skit, skit on their creation story. I was had jokes about a woman that was pregnant falling from the sky, about some amazing duck arrow dynamics that saved her and brought her on a turtle's back and a muskrat that has come to peer pressure to go and save her. <laughs> However, stupid stuff happens. And uh, last week, um, a senator said something very, very stupid. And so this is my sort of morning. I'll be discussing content uh, that could be triggering. Uh, so we'll be with residential school systems and stuff like that. So if you don't want to hear that, here is your time to leave. I'll also be swearing. Because <laughs> it's fucking angry. Good. Everyone's weird or intrigued. Awesome. All right. So I'm not going to say the senator's name. I will refer to her as Senator Asshat. <laughs> said something on the lines of the media spends too much time focusing on the negativities of the residential school. And we need to focus more on the positive aspects of the residential schools. So, because I hate myself, I decided to look in the comments. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> it's horrible. But there's lots of ass hats out there. Tons and tons and tons of ass hats. So this is something that uh, needs to be discussed. So for those of you who don't know what residential school is, think of the Hunger Games. All right. So instead of the capital, we have our capital. Ottawa. And instead of districts, you have indigenous communities where they would send the capital police forces, or in our instance, the RCMP and other police forces. And they would collect tribute of two random people. However, in our situation, everyone was a tribute. No escaping that. Right? And in the Hunger Games, they take these children and they go and they do an arena where they fight each other and kill each other and leave one person left. In residential school systems, they all went, and there was a 50% casualty rating in those residential schools, and approximately 50,000 indigenous students died. Now, I have a morbid sense of humor, as you will soon find out, and I decided to do some math, and this is the only time you'll ever hear the statistic. It's the only time in the world I'm 99% sure no one has done this. So I took 50,000, which is the number of indigenous students that died, and I figured the Hunger Games claims 23 children a year, because only one can live, right? So I wanted to know how long the Hunger Games would have to last before it reached the casualty rates of residential schools. Turns out that's 2,172 years of Hunger Games before you get to the casualty rates of residential schools. That's insane. You have a fictional world that's meant to kill people, and Sir A. McDonald is saying, that's rookie numbers, you need to get them up. <laughs> that's rookie numbers. You can laugh. <laughs> I know, laugh. That's good. We'll get through this. All right. So I'm here to address some concerns that come up in apologetics of residential school. The first one I hear more often than not, unfortunately, is that I know some Indian people who went to residential schools, and they were fine. They didn't have a problem with it. These other people, they're just overreacting. Uh, the church is the one that led it, and I've had really good experiences with the church. They're wholesome, they're good. I think they're just over exaggerating. <laughs> I was waiting to finish that, and I'm going to. That's the equivalent of saying, you know what, I know people who dated Bill Cosby, but I grew up with him, and he was amazing, fun, wholesome on his TV <laughs> channel, and I just think there's other people overreacting. That's crazy. That's what people say. People still defend both of them. This is spoken word now. So it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. It's good, but the reason why I compare Bill Cosby to the church is because I wanted someone that was seen as wholesome and good for the community and people looked up to that had an evil secret. And people don't understand that with the residential schools, unfortunately, because we have people saying, I think there's too many negativities about this. Go, go, go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Another one I hear a lot is 
recognize that residential schools had the best intentions. They had the best intentions and they just fell short from that, which is really, really difficult for me to understand because you have people that literally say the residential schools were designed to kill the Indian in the child. Flat out, that's where it is. And if you think that was good intentions, <laughs> but you can't get any clearer than that. You have doctors who've looked at the policies of putting children with smallpox and then the children that were like didn't have smallpox together to play to make sure all the children have smallpox. So unless you think that's some weird medical eugenics program to make my people immune to smallpox, I don't see that as a positive. <laughs> that being said, I've never con uh, had smallpox, so for all I know. <laughs> <laughs> that could have been where it is. This is dumb. <laughs> the last thing I'm going to say is a lot of people say that this happened such a long time ago that we need to get over it. I hear that all the time. The last residential school closed down in 1996. To put that into perspective, in 1990, the number one hit single was Ice Ice Baby. <laughs> <laughs> they just put a satellite to the moon. The Hubble satellite went up in 1990. We sent a satellite in space before we stopped residential schools. But like, we ever find aliens, we have this amazing program that we can assimilate them and use. <laughs> Home Alone was also the number one box office movie in the 1990s. But if little Kevin was indigenous, he wouldn't be home. Alone. <laughs> what about 1996? I know. I know. There we go. We're getting this. We can laugh. 1996, when it did close, number one hit box office song was Spice Girls, Wannabe. Yeah. This wasn't too long ago. What happened a year after residential schools were closed? Pokemon. Pokemon came out in 1997. We've almost had Pokemon just as long as residential schools can be gone. I'm not saying that closing down residential schools was the reason why we have Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> I like to think it does. <laughs> oh man. Another I know I said that was the last one, but you guys started laughing up there, so that's <laughs> I tried very, very hard to put myself in these shoes to find some sort of a positive thing about residential schools, because it's something I hear a lot. And I always hear, you know, well, we taught them English, and they didn't have good homes, and they were fed, and they were warm and stuff at residential schools. So let's just ignore the fact that the reason why they didn't have good homes and weren't fed and stuff at the communities is because they're forced not to. I like to think that the residential schools contributed to our current health um, <laughs> our current health system. I don't think we would have the calories at McDonald's posted if it wasn't for residential schools because they were the champions of making sure people weren't under calories. And those of you who want to know, are making this one calorie. I had to look that up and know. <laughs> There's not a lot of funny about residential schools. I try to make it as funny as possible. I hit some. And if anyone says we need to focus on the positives of residential schools, politely tell them to go fuck yourself. Thank you. <laughs>